everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing a Corgi Q&A. I asked you all on Instagram and YouTube what questions you had for me about corgis and all of that stuff. So today I'm going to be answering all of your questions and I thought it would be a fun twist on a Q&A to add some, add some toys into the mix. So we're actually calling this a Q and play. Willow has a couple of new toys and we're going to open them up and see what she thinks about them. And um, Willow has already gotten started with her Nerf duck. If you have never watched our videos before, this is going to be a really informative introduction to corgis and corgi ownership. And I always try to make it a little bit fun too. All right, we are going to start with the questions that we got on YouTube and we are gonna start with Squeaky Bone. These toys are supposed to smell like dog food. Well, this one's supposed to smell like beef. It doesn't smell like beef to humans, but to dogs, apparently it does. You want this? So the first question is, besides dog food, where do I get recipes or follow certain guides that Willow can or can't eat? And a lot of foods that I feed Willow, I commonly just Google really quickly. Can dogs have, like, can dogs have watermelon? Can dogs have blueberries? And those are both yes. Other than that, I obviously, the food that I feed Willow, I feed her Stella and Chewy. She's on a freeze dried raw diet. And these patties that I give her have all of the nutrients that she needs in a meal. And then I just add things on top to make it taste better for her, to make it more exciting. Things I commonly add are like carrots or apples, celery, green beans. You can add dog bone broth onto their food. But yeah, that's pretty much how I make sure Willow is having a balanced diet. It's just making sure she's getting the right amount of food that she needs every day and then just adding greens and veggies and fruits into her meals. The next question, how much does Willow weigh? She weighs 28, 27 pounds. Her weight kind of fluctuates. I think she's gotten up to 29 pounds. So I try to keep her under 30 pounds. Corgis can get overweight really easily and it's not good for them to be overweight because it puts a lot of pressure on their bones and joints. And I mean, being overweight is obviously not good for them. So try to keep her under 30 pounds, but all corgis are different. It's crazy the difference in weights that corgis have. And it's just based on their actual size and their bone structure. Willow is a healthy weight at 28 pounds, but 28 pounds could be really heavy for a smaller built corgi. So it just really depends. If you can feel their ribs when you pet them, that is good and shows that they are a good weight. And then they should have a little bit of a waistline. So they should be kind of trim and uh, just not like a big fat circle, basically. Would I suggest getting a trainer at six weeks or training themselves and learn from basic YouTube commands? I mean, that is really up to you and your budget. It obviously would be great to have a trainer the day that you bring them home so that you can start teaching them all of the best habits and make sure that they aren't learning any bad habits that are gonna be harder to train out of and all of that. But if you can't afford a trainer, there are really good resources that you can find on YouTube, online, and just making sure that you're patient and consistent with them is always a good route to take. Trainers can be expensive and it's not really an option for everyone. I didn't get a trainer for Willow until she was like two. And um, I did have to do some counter correcting on some bad habits that she had picked up, but I also did like the puppy training classes at PetSmart and there are other things that you can invest in that are a little more affordable than a trainer. It's really just up to you. How do I keep Willow's coat so white? So there is this purple shampoo that I use and the purple of the shampoo is supposed to make their white fur whiter instead of getting like dull and yellow or whatever. Um, so I use a white shampoo and that has really helped keep Willow's fur bright white. And I can link that shampoo below for you. But any type of purple shampoo from Amazon or Chewy, just make sure it is for dogs. And that is a really good way to keep their white fur white. Next question, why is Willow so quiet when filming? I thought corgis were a vocal breed. 
Yeah, Willow is definitely vocal when she wants attention or she wants to play. I remember when she was a puppy, she would literally just bark at me while I was sitting on the couch and just she would not stop. And I, funny enough, I forgot that she used to be like that until somebody reminded me of it. But yeah, they are really vocal. Willow has a lot of different noises that she makes apart from the howling. She whines a lot when she's bored. Right now, um, she's just content. I don't know, she's a pretty calm corgi as far as corgis go. So while she is vocal a lot, she's also really calm a lot of the time. And I've only had one corgi in my life, but I know that that's more on the rare side for corgis as far as their personalities go. Right. What inspired me to get Willow? Um, the first time I saw a corgi, I just quickly became obsessed with them and I was always looking for them everywhere I went. When I learned that they were really active and really social, I knew it was a perfect fit for me because I wanted a dog that I could take hiking and traveling and... <laughs> I need to show you guys what Willow's doing. What are you doing? What are you doing, Stinker? Hi. You just get a burst of energy? We we're talking about how lazy you are and then you just got all energized? Huh? Do you want to open a new toy? Come on. Come on. Yeah, I just, based on their personalities, I knew it was going to be a perfect fit for me and I found the breeder that I wanted to go with. Luckily, they were local or, you know, close to me in Arizona. They had beautiful dogs and they showed their dogs as well. So that's another good sign of a trusted breeder um, if they're showing their dogs at dog competitions and stuff. That is always something you want to look for. So I found the breeder and I just kept an eye out for whenever they were having a new litter. And then I finally decided that I was gonna pull the trigger. They had a litter, they had three female puppies available. So I reached out and she selected me to have the last pick of the litter. Willow was the last pick of the litter, meaning nobody picked her. And so I got her and I think I was actually the luckiest one out of the mix. <laughs> does Willow get jealous of other pets? Yes, she totally does. And sometimes it is a good thing. I mean, it's not a good thing, but it's cute because if another pet comes up and cuddles with me, she'll instantly be like, oh man, I got to cuddle too. That's my mom. So she will come up and like sit on top of me. And it's kind of a possessive thing, I think. So it's probably not a good thing necessarily, but I think it's cute. And um, she also has a negative side of getting jealous, but it's actually called resource guarding. And she resource guards toys and food from other animals. And that sometimes can lead to like her trying to fight off the dog who is getting too close to a treat that she wants. And that is never good. That's something that we're working on. But After talking to other corgi owners, I have learned that it is actually a pretty common thing with female corgis, which sucks because it's really hard to correct, but we are working on it. And if I ever find the solution, I'll make a video and share with you guys what works for me. Okay, wait. Next question, how did I get Willow to stop biting? Um, this person has a three month old corgi that bites everything and yeah, uh, especially with corgis because they are herding dogs. They nip a lot. Um, one of the terms that they are called is a healer. So that means that they're going to be nipping at the heels of people or animals to tell them <laughs> to tell them where to go and you know try to herd them. And then also on the other side, puppies just bite a lot because they're teething and that's how they're like exploring the world and they think everything is a toy. So, I mean, the best tip I have is to have a lot of good chewy toys and anytime your dog starts biting you, to replace your hand or your arm or your shirt or your face with a dog toy. 
Another good thing is to get things like frozen Kongs or a big giant carrot or any type of teething dog toys, put them in the freezer. You could cover them with peanut butter um, or yogurt, freeze them, and then give it to them as a way to chew and, you know, help their teething pain. Another good trick that you can try is when your dog bites you, you're going to kind of react as if you are another puppy in their litter or a playmate. And pup, the thing about puppies is because they haven't really been socialized, they don't know how hard to bite. They don't know how hard is too hard. And they learn that by playing with other dogs. So you're gonna be that other dog. And when they bite you, you're supposed to yelp the way that like a puppy would yelp, like, ah! you know, like something really high pitched and loud like that. And then after that, you get up and walk away. So your dog is learning that when you make that noise, when they bite that hard or bite you at all, that playtime stops. So they're kind of learning that they shouldn't do that because when they do that, they don't get rewarded. That is probably the best way to try to teach them not to bite. But, you know, as puppies, they just tend to grow out of it. So sometimes you just have to be patient and substitute your arm with chew toys and just wait it out because they will grow out of it. They won't grow up biting you like that. You know, they'll figure it out. All right, now we're gonna move on to Instagram questions. Oh, Willow's changed toys. This is Willow's ducky. She got it for her birthday and she's already killing it. She's killing it. <laughs> it's a Nerf dog duck and she's gonna go get it. So it's like a slingshot and she chases it. All right, bring it, bring it up here. You want to try a new toy? You want to open a donut? Come on, come up, come on. These little mini donut packs. I don't know if they squeak. Oh yeah, they do. Get it, chew it. How did I start potty training Willow when she was a puppy? Well, honestly, I didn't do the best job at potty training. I think Willow was still like having accidents in the house at three, three or four months old. And then I also taught her that it was okay to pee on the patio. First, I would put like a grass patch on the patio, but then like, honestly, I was just lazy and impatient and I would just put her right outside the door and be like, pee. And when she did, I was like, okay, that's good enough. But I have learned since that you need to be more patient with puppies. For example, when Willow was eight weeks old, I would stick her outside and expect her just to go potty. And they, their minds don't work like that. You have to let them sniff around. You have to sit outside for like 10 to 15 minutes maybe and really let them figure it out. And then once they do pee, you reward them, give them a treat, tell them good girl or a good boy. And then what you want to do is right after they pee, they're allowed to play around the house for like about 20 minutes. And then you want to take them outside again because they pee so often. So if you can keep them on a schedule of taking them outside every 20 minutes and trying to get them to go that often, if not after 20 minutes, if they don't go potty outside, then they have to go back into a crate or a pen or a small confined area where they're not just freely roaming the house. And this kind of allows them to, <clears throat> either they won't pee because it's like their bed and their space where they want it to stay clean, or they will just be peeing in a smaller area and at least you're teaching them not to pee all over the house. But I think that's the best way. I am not looking, I am not looking forward to potty training another puppy because Willow is so stubborn. She was not easy to potty train. And I was also lazy, so that's, that's also my problem. <laughs> As a dog mom, do you struggle with separation anxiety from Willow, even going out for a night? Yes, I especially did when she was a puppy. I hated leaving her at home. Um, even if I had somebody else watching her, I would still feel really guilty. And even now, especially because of COVID and because I have really trained her that I am home all the time, I feel horrible leaving her. Sometimes I have to go into the office during the day for a little bit and I feel really bad leaving her at home for more than like two hours, which I need to get over because they are fine being left at home. They're gonna sleep, you know, leave them some treats out. At the end of the day, they are dogs and you can leave them alone and have your own life. But yes, I have really bad anxiety. 
well, I wouldn't say really bad, but I do have anxiety leading her. And I know that she has separation anxiety as well. So I always put down like a treat puzzle or a treat toy where she has to really focus on getting the treats out while I sneak out. And then that usually helps a lot with her separation anxiety. Well, so yes, I suffer with that for sure. It's something I'm working on and I don't really have any solutions, but it is tough and I can relate to that for sure. Someone asked me my proudest dog mom moment. I know I have a lot of them, but I can't think of like one specific moment. But I just really love when people compliment me for how good Willow is. And I know that it's all her, her personality. She's such a social butterfly. She loves all animals and all people. And people tell me how well mannered she is, like for how she's being such a good girl right now. <laughs> while I'm filming this video. She's pretty much like that everywhere. And I'm always proud to be her mom, but I can't think of anything specific. How did I teach Willow to leave it for more than five seconds? Well, corgis are very food driven, which is great. And it makes it easy to train them things. So what I did for leave it, let me see if I have a treat. When you're gonna put a treat down here like this and you're gonna say leave it and they're going to want the treat really bad, right? So you're just gonna cover it with your hand. Once they stop trying to get the treat and they look up at you, you can, so you're gonna be saying leave it, leave it, leave it. Once they stop, good girl. You reward them, nope, wait, leave it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Good girl, leave it. And so the trick about leave it is you're teaching leave it because if they were ever in a situation where they were gonna eat a weed or a dead bird or something in public somewhere at the park or whatever, and you tell them leave it because you know it's bad for them, it's gonna make them sick, they leave it. So they don't touch it. And so the best way to teach leave it is to not let them take the treat that's on the floor to give them a different treat from your hand so that they're learning to, that they're never allowed to eat this treat that they're leaving. Leave it. She looked at me, good girl, take it. And that's how you teach leave it. And it, I mean, it won't be that, she already knows the trick. So you'll just have to keep covering it, you know? And then once they actually leave it for half a second or they make eye contact with you, then you reward them basically. Any tips on cutting her nails? <laughs> yes, so cutting their nails is really important because when their nails are too long and they're pressing against the floor when they stand, it's going to start putting pressure on their nail beds and then it's gonna make them start figuring out different ways to stand and walk because they don't like that pressure and that pain. Think about when this might be gross, but your toenails are too long and you wear tennis shoes for a long time and then your toes start to hurt. That is how the pressure is and the pain is on your dogs when their nails are too long. And so they're going to start finding new ways to walk and stand to relieve that pressure. And then that's going to affect their overall posture and their joints and their bones and all of that. So you really want to make sure your dog's nails are staying short and not pressing against the ground. One way to get them used to um, doing their nails. Stay, it's okay. So what, what you wanna do is desensitize, desensitize them to a Dremel, which I mean, that's what I do. But what you're gonna do is kind of start out by, she touched it, good girl, yes. So you just take it slow, like, good girl. When she's fine being around the Dremel, that's when you're going to give her a treat or him. So teaching them, Willow, can you touch, touch? Good girl, yes, good girl. Touch, Willow, shake, touch, touch. Good girl, yes. So you kind of desensitize them. You try it with it on. Good girl. You touch, Willow, touch. Good girl. So those are 
those are some ways um, to get them desensitized to the Dremel. And then I'll show you quickly how I Dremel those nails. It's nice to be able to just put them on their back like this. You have more control over them and you can face them the other way too, put their head down there. But then I just hold her paw and do little taps. I do the side, the other side, and then the middle. And that's how I do it. And it's pretty quick. Um, she fights me sometimes. She does take her back legs and kick me with them. But um, it's a work in progress. I know there are some dogs that will literally fall asleep while you're doing their nails, but it just takes time and conditioning to teach them that it's okay to get their nails done. If you can't get your dog to stay still to do their nails, then another option is just to take them to a vet or a groomer to have them done at least once a month. But I try to do Willow's nails once a week. I'm getting a Corgi in October. What's the main thing I should be ready for? Potty training. <laughs> Potty training is the hardest for sure. I mean, they're stubborn, they're loud, their teeth, they bite. So, I mean, I would follow the tips that I gave earlier about potty training and um, their biting, teaching them not to bite. But yeah, be ready to have to stay home a lot and be ready to be patient with a puppy. I am so grateful for all of you that have subscribed to our channel. I'm going to continue to bring you as much fun and informative corgi content as I can. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about or suggestions. Willow just hit the camera and that's why it's shaking. Willow, come here, you gotta say bye to the subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Um, of course, if you're not subscribed yet, please do. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button um, I realize I don't do that very often when I'm watching YouTube videos, but it's really important for the algorithm to pick up on my videos and share it out to more people. Would really love to continue making YouTube videos and the more subscribers that we have, the more often I'm going to be able to create videos basically because um, I have a full-time job too and it's a lot of work. But <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Willow, come here. If you guys didn't see Charlie here this whole time, he's being such a sweet little sleepy head. Where's Charlie? He's right here. <laughs>